All right. So we have everyone. Let me, I see, it looks like, it looks like JD is still getting, trying to get audio. So we don't, we have a quorum. I see JD. Oh, good. I see JD. Hey, JD. You can hear. All right. JD's responding. Laura, you're out there. Your video and audio is off. Yep. Hi, I'm here. Um, my video seems to have a problem in Zoom, so I'm just going to stay on video unless I need to turn it on while I'm talking. Sounds good. good. All yeah. right. That sounds great, Laura. Thank you. Okay. So we have a quorum. It's 5.02 p.m. I'll call the meeting to order. Um, I noticed we have a number of folks attending tonight for the DMCTC topic. Um, and what I think I'm going to do, what I think I'm going to do, I normally like to move things like that up earlier in the agenda just so my good neighbors don't have to listen to a lot of planning board um, administrivia. Um, but maybe what I'll do is we'll do a little bit of our regular agenda just to give people some time uh, to assemble. I see another person, Isaac Fleischer, is trying to join. So, um, so okay. So we're going to do a little bit of the regular agenda, and then I'll try to move the the MCTC topic a little bit earlier in the agenda. I think I can get through the first couple of items pretty quickly. The first item that was on our agenda was review the handout on bylaw proposals for annual town meeting. Uh, the, it turned out that the deadline to submit that to the town administrator was yesterday, circulated the document um, via email and people sent me comments individually, which I uh, which I took I addressed and submitted a new document by yesterday's deadline. I guess I'll simply um, let me just see. I don't know that I need to bother people with this, but maybe I'll just take a minute and share this final document. Let's share. Let's share. Sharing my screen. Okay. So hopefully everyone can see my screen. Um, and I'll connect this bigger. So I'll just summarize that um, I ended up mashing up some material that we've developed and circulated and discussed over a number of past meetings, some, and ultimately ended up with a three-page uh, report that's going to go in the town meeting booklet. So that this that fits the pay, the number of pages that were allocated. So we have just a very short summary of each of the six amendments that we're proposing this year. One, the deletion of growth control. Two, um, uh, the changes to the aquifer protection bylaw, the amendment to the zoning map. There's more material on the new community housing bylaw. This is where I did a little bit of a mashup with um, just a very short summary of what the bylaw is intended to do in the first paragraph. And then we had developed a separate document that really summarized what we mean by community housing and how that relates to this bylaw. And in the process, I got updated 2024 income limits. I got assistance from Megan Rhodes at the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. She pointed me to the right number. So I got new income limits. I got new rent caps for 2024. So I got that into the document. Uh, I got in a short summary of the changes to our table of use regulations that are complementary to the new community housing bylaw. And lastly, a very brief summary 
of the uh, changes we're proposing to the table of dimensional requirements. So the warrant will contain all the bylaw language, and it will also contain the information about recommendations and support for these various amendments from other appropriate boards and committees in town. So it's left out of this particular document. To help people understand the zoning map, I got it down to, and I turned the zoning map on its side. So people are gonna have to like, turn the booklet on their side to get a, uh, a better view of the maps. But I put in the proposed new zoning map that is going to be voted on. And then in the final page, I put in this modified map that we've uh, we've circulated that is not the new zoning map. It's really for illus illustration and education only to highlight what protection zones are changing as we move from the current map to the proposed new map. And so we got that all into three pages and submitted. So I think I'll just simply ask if anyone on the board um, has any questions. This is going to be a public document. Um, this is part of our what we communicate to residents about these bylaw amendments. So there's a, like maybe a last chance. I think things have gone to the printers, but if anyone caught anything egregious, this is the time to speak up. So just take a pause to see if anyone on the board has any concerns, questions. I'll allow a pregnant pause since we're on Zoom and I can't look you all in the eye. So I'm gonna assume that that means we're good. All right, so that's that's done. I wanna move to the next item how are we doing? All right, looks like we've sort of got stabilized in a number of participants. So I'll do the next brief item on the memo to town clerk about eligible locations. So let me just speak about that. And then what I hope to do is move the DMCTC topic to, to the next item coming, coming right after this. And then we'll do the permit application, approval of minutes and, and afterwards. Okay, all right. So um, again, let me share, I'm gonna share my screen because uh, I wanna show you, I'm not going to actually show you the, um, usually I get to share my, selectively share my, So I'm gonna share, let me make this larger so we can all see it. So um, as a follow-up to our vote on the community housing bylaw, you may remember when we voted that to approve it, we also discussed this concept of eligible locations and agreed as part of that vote that because community housing, that there were three zoning districts in Waitley that were eligible locations per the definition of the Zoning Act. Uh, so I'm gonna give you a little background on this memo to town clerk. We're not gonna actually review the memo because I'm still awaiting town council um, input on this memo. I wanna give you a little bit of the background on it. What I'm sharing on my screen is a section, section 1A of the Zoning Act. And I wanna highlight for, for you all, the definition in the Zoning Act for eligible locations, all right? So the Zoning Act defines eligible locations as areas that are highly suitable locations for residential or mixed youth, smart growth, starter homes and so forth. All right, so this is the definition of an, what an eligible location is. The 
significance of that definition will be clear in a moment. So keep in mind that there's this concept of an eligible location. Now, in section five of the Zoning Act, section five describes how new zoning ordinances and bylaws, what the procedure is for adopting new zoning bylaws. I'm gonna scroll deep into section five and highlight this paragraph for the moment where the standard rule for votes at town meeting is that, um, I'm gonna really highlight this. All right, so we all know that your typical zoning bylaw presented at town meeting needs to pass by a two thirds vote, right? That's, that's the general rule. But there are certain cases where only a simple majority rather than a two thirds majority is acceptable for zoning bylaw amendments. And I'll point out this paragraph. I'm gonna highlight just the first part of it. So when there is an amendment to a zoning ordinance or bylaw and creating and adding a, a new community housing bylaw to our zoning bylaws is an example of an amendment to a zoning ordinance. And when you're doing it by special permit, as we do in the community housing bylaw, if we, if we are allowing these uses by special permit in an eligible location, then according to the Zoning Act, only a simple majority is needed to pass. So the real question we were trying to understand was, does the community housing bylaw require a two thirds majority to pass like all the others, or can it pass by a simple majority vote at town meeting? And the town council's advice was that it can pass with a simple majority as long as we, the planning board, have determined what the eligible locations are in town. And we discussed this and determined that the agricultural residential districts one and two and the commercial district were the three zoning districts that collectively were eligible locations per the Zoning Act definition. And we're sort of following that story so far. So we made that determination. We actually voted on it, though we voted on it to kind of bundled with our vote for the community housing bylaw. Town council recommended as just further support for um, with the attorney general's office regarding a simple majority vote for passage that we, the planning board, send a, submit a memo to the town clerk and or the town moderator of the entities involved in determining voting at town meeting and, have a, and give them a memo conveying in writing our determination that those three zoning districts are the eligible locations in town for, you know, per this definition in the Zoning Act. Let's see, Tim has. So anyway, um, town council recommended that we put together such a memo and town council said it was maybe just a paragraph or so, and he would be happy to help provide the language for such a memo. And I've been trying to work with town council to just get that language together. So right now, I don't yet have a, a draft memo from town council on this topic. All I wanted to do is um, update you on the planning board about what it's all about. And I hope to have that, I hope to have that soon. Questions? Did I confuse anybody about eligible locations, two thirds votes versus simple majority votes, why we might consider 
AR1, AR2, and commercial to be eligible locations? Any questions? Mostly see Sarah looking very calm about the whole situation. So I'm going to take that to mean that we're good. So no action on this item tonight. Just consider yourself a little bit more informed about what's going on. Um, but the game plan for town meeting, when, I, when I'm thinking of doing, well, based on count, town council advice, we believe that the community housing bylaw can, only needs a simple majority and that this memo is just additional documentation to make it clear that you know, we planned this in advance and, and, and made a determination about this. Okay. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing this. So I think what we're gonna do now is we're going to move, because I see we now have, I think mostly everybody with an interest in the DMCTC marijuana cultivation uh, topic. So let's, let's start that. What I wanna do is just provide a little bit of context for why I opted to put this on tonight's agenda. So um, in a way, I, I sort of, uh, there's a, a bit of um, no good deed goes unpunished here in the sense that um, uh, Jared Glansberger of DMCTC kept me on his own initiative, um, kept me informed of some recent communications that he's been receiving in particular about um, screening along the Northern fence line of their property at Seven River Road. So this was entirely you know, voluntary on the part of um, EMCTC. Uh, the planning board to my knowledge has not received any um, complaints from residents or concerns. It really just came from um, DMCTC. Uh, I, after some email correspondence with Jared, I thought it made sense for me personally to get a little bit of a feeling. I haven't visited the facility at Seven River Road since we last did a site review and approved it in uh, October of 2022. Seemed like a perfectly reasonable occasion for me to stop by and see what the, what the situation was, get my own eyes on it. Jared was very willing and um, you know, it made it very easy for us to find a time to, to make that happen. So I did a site visit. Basically, I went there with um, keeping with records of the conditions that the planning board had placed on the Seven River Road facility when we had approved the site plan. We walked the property. We also walked Three River Road right next door. Uh, I would say that my general, uh, my general assessment was that the site plan conditions had largely been met there was this outstanding issue of the northern fence line not being screened in any way when I visited. And this was just a couple of weeks ago. Um, so there was no, no screening of the northern fence line and there had been a condition to that effect uh, in the original site plan review. And we talked about that. Uh, I, there's records in the minutes going back to November of 2022, where the adjacent abutter to the north, Tim Smith, who's here, indicated that the original planning board uh, requirement for landscape screening would create an issue and that the screening could lead to excessively tall plants that could shade his property and impact his agricultural operations there. So 
back in circa November of 2022, there were plans afoot for DMCTC and Tim Smith to work out a, an appropriate screening arrangement that would meet the requirements and the intention of the planning board when we set these landscape screening conditions in 2022, but not have the adverse impact that um, Mr. Smith was concerned about. So that was all to be agreed upon. We had that discussion in about November of 2022, and the planning board has not been following it since then. So evidently since that time, no landscape planting had been done. Jared confirmed that that was still a matter that still seemed to be under discussion. Um, so at the time of my site visit, my recent site visit, we agreed that we knew Jared was looking into landscape screening options and intending to talk further to Tim Smith. Uh, I sent a email inquiry to Mr. Smith to just find out independently how, what he was thinking about the screening issue. And he raised that with some other questions. Um, and so I basically decided that it might be wise just to get everybody on the same page, to put this on tonight's agenda um, and give interested parties a chance to share what they are thinking about the, the situation. I've been made aware over the last few days, there's been additional email correspondence on the issue. My overall sense is that um, the MCTC is um, trying to behave as a good neighbor and, and live up to their commitments. Uh, I do have maybe some questions myself, but um, what I'm going to attempt to do is um, I think what I want to do is I'm going to moderate this conversation a little bit. I see, I know that Ethan Hazlitt's here, uh, Jared's here. Um, there are some other people. Tim Smith is here. So I think what I want to do is, since DMCTC initiated this, you know, I, maybe they, <laughs> sorry, Jared, if you regret bringing this to my attention, but I really feel you did the right thing. Um, I'd like to give Jared the floor first to update, you know, me, the board, and all of us about where he feels matters stand at this point. And then I think I'm going to try to call on all the other participants here and see, starting with Tim and Ethan and others, and see um, if we can get this all sorted out tonight. Okay, that's my game plan. All right, so as I said, Jared, uh, please come off mute uh, and share where you think we are with respect to the issues that have been raised. Sure. Um, hey guys. So um, I guess my plan would be to give a brief summary of where I think we are and then really to turn over to Tim um, who I think, you know, is our northern, you know, our butter immediately to the north. And then if uh, uh, if Chris Green is on the call, you know, to to check in with him as well, because he has a direct line of sight to our to our fence. Okay. So the update is we've been in touch with a number of different landscaping companies. Um, you know, we've sent the the overall plan to these companies. Um, I've received uh, uh, a couple quotes back. Um, I expect to ha collect, uh, you know, about five in total. Um, we have the good fortune of Chris Green uh, being a contractor and capable of doing plant installation. So, you know, in the best case, I would work with Chris uh, to have, you know, the plants installed. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm trying to 
both be a good neighbor and understand Tim Smith's concerns about shading. I'm trying to do this as economically as possible. I'm trying to do it in a way that, uh, you know, conforms to the interests of, uh, of the community and neighborhood um, and isn't, you know, an overly burdensome obligation on my part. Um, so I've uh, reached out to Tim um, and, you know, I, I expect that he and I should be able to get together uh, once I have these in hand, uh, perhaps with Chris Green as well, and to come up with uh, a workable, a workable plan. Um, so that's my intention on the Northern property side, uh, side. Um, you know, as far as timing is concerned, the fields are extremely wet. Um, we've had a lot of rainfall, um, just from, you know, a, a horticultural perspective, uh, the fall when it's drier out, uh, and the, the plants are dormant, um, is typically the ideal time to have these things installed. I've heard that uniformly from, you know, each landscaping group that I've spoken with. And so that's, uh, broadly speaking, my plan is uh, gather the, this information, um, bring it to Tim and, uh, and Chris and, you know, get, get it going. Okay, very good. The, um, there, were, there were two issues. There was landscape screening and then there is a matter of the driveway. And what I want to do again. So, so Brant, if I if I may, if we could just take it point by point, if, okay. Tim, if yeah. Tim would would react to that just to make sure that that's acceptable to him. That sounds me. that sounds good to me. Tim Smith, please, uh, you've got the floor. Yeah, um, yeah, that plan sounds good. Um, my biggest concern always was not towering trees that would cast that shadow, but something that would just go to the height, mature height, that would grow to the mature height to cover the, the fence, you know, okay. so you just didn't see it. That 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 was my concern. Okay. But if, that, but if I get the planting in the fall for, for a better uh, result of um, the health of the plants. Okay. That's, that sounds good. And we just can come up, I don't I don't know what, what would work out there for plants, but I'm sure Jerry would have some people that yep. had some good ideas, so. Yep, and I and Tim, I can provide you with that list that um, we sort of pre-selected, and I I've already soft socialized with Chris as well. Okay, sounds good. I'll I'll say personally that as I've been dealing with this and looked at screening around Waitley, I have to say that I've been underwhelmed by how 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 screening works, or maybe the the difference in expectations between like I think. What I see a lot, because I drive up and down Chris, um, Christian Road, and probably Sarah feels the same way, the screening of the solar facility is pretty, pretty dreadful. Though I don't know, um, you know, I think the intent, and I'll, I'll try to make the relevance of this point about solar to, to Jared's northern fence line, but I think the intent of the board was and, and for abutters and neighbors, like they didn't really want to see the fence, right? They just wanted plantings there and sort of the, the solar and the fencing to be, to be hidden behind visually appealing vegetation. And year in, year out, that's clearly not working. Though I, have, I understand that to make it work, you know, requires property owner level, like care and feeding and nurturing of these plants, you know, making sure they're watered. And I, and I know that the solar company is clearly not doing that, or they're checking in once or twice a season. So for, you know, I know it's, 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 we have these big expectations, but it's hard to do. I think we probably have to do a better job holding the solar company's feet to the fire, but I understand where Jared is coming from too. And this sort of like a comment to neighbors that we'll get plantings there. I think we would like, we want DMCTC to make a good faith effort to care for and maintain those plantings so that they establish and they grow and they're and dead ones are replaced. Um, but I also understand and appreciate that can be hard to get watering 
this, you know, out to these lines on the other side of fences. And I also understand with DMCTC's case, they have to keep the landscape screening far enough away from the fences to not pose other kinds of security concerns. Is that right, Jared? Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, so there's other folks that submitted plans to the Triple C uh, that were rejected because it created an opportunity for people to hide in the bushes and potentially break into the fence. So there just has to be a gap between, you know, and also you could, I suppose, use the plants to hop over the fence. So there just has to be a, a large enough channel that it doesn't create a threat, um, you know, that that the beautification effort isn't running orthogonal to the security purpose of the fence in the first place. Thank you. I just, I, I feel like the, the challenge for the planning board is on the one hand to respect the desire of neighbors to not necessarily have to look at what might be considered an eyesore, like they'd like to look at vegetation rather than a long green fence line. But at the same time, we, the planning board, don't want to impose, um, you know, a, a, an exorbitant, a, a financially financial hardship on a business to maintain. Um, so I, I think there's going to be a balance to be struck between a reasonable fence screening um, and something that might seem like it's uh, hidden behind a forest. So Tim's good. Were there others? I'm trying to see. I see certain people on video. Maybe I'm just going to call out names of people I think may want to speak and give you a chance to speak on this topic or ask any questions. And I'll just sort of go around before we deal with uh, the driveway issue. So I, I know Ethan Hazlitt was one of the ones concerned about the screening. So I want to give you a chance to come off mute and um, say what you might like to say. Sure. Thank you very much. Um, I guess the concern I had is that I'm, I'm looking at the email history that I have, and we discussed this back in fall of 2022. And then I asked to be informed as to how things would proceed. And to my knowledge, and I may have missed an email, I did not receive anything from that point. And so my concern is just this languished and nothing happened. And so I brought it back up and I think perhaps that's why we're all here, but I would like something to be done in okay. an expeditious fashion, but also taking into account all the points being made. Okay. So that's it. For so me. based on what you've heard, assuming that, so I think based on what I've heard, there will be plantings put in in the fall. And we will hope that they will start to establish. So this is, there's not going to be much change in the landscape during 2024 till the fall. New plants go in, in in the fall. Then we might start to see some meaningful impact on the visual landscape sometime in 2025. I do think it's, it, it is a fair point and a fair question how it is that this, um, this landscape screening that was agreed to has taken so long to, to really get addressed. Uh, I would recommend Ethan and anyone that the planning board would be the first place to go for questions. And of course, I think I would generally encourage neighbors to try to work things out amongst themselves if they and then if they don't feel that they're getting or they don't know what the what is or isn't required or what is or isn't expected, the planning board is the right place to go to get those questions answered. But Ethan, how do you feel based on what you we we think this the way that we it sounds like it's going to play out? Will this be okay with you? And then we make sure we check in in say spring of 2025 to see how the screening is going. Uh, I think that sounds fine. I, I do think it would be good to have an update this fall to make sure things are on track. I agree. So I, I, 
I don't think that we'll necessarily need a planning board meeting for it, but I, the planning board will take the action to follow up with the MCTC in the fall. Um, and I'm happy to, if I, I would like to request that anyone who would like to be informed by the planning board, I don't think it's really appropriate to be asking businesses in town to provide updates um, on their operations to arbitrary interested stakeholders. Uh, but if Ethan and others would like updates from the planning board, get on my radar. Send an email to planning board, all one word at waitley.org, and I'll make sure that after we follow up, we'll communicate to you what, what's, what's worth knowing. And if we don't, then you hold the planning board accountable, which is appropriate. We're your, we're your, we're your neighbors. So, you know, yell at me, but um, let's let's try to let's try to do it that way. So the planning board will follow up with DMCTC about action with respect to screening in the fall, and again in the following spring, and share updates with interested stakeholders who've notified the planning board by email that they would like to be notified. Okay. Um, and uh, Brent, just a little. Oh, sorry. Ethan, Hold on. Question. Let me uh, hear. I'll recognize you in a second, Chris. Go ahead, Ethan. Um, when is an appropriate date to email you for follow up? You can email the planning board anytime you want. I would say what I'm suggesting or, or requesting is that you email me like today and just say, I would like to be notified of updates related to the landscape screening at Seven River Road. And I'll put you on my list and I'll be sure to do that. And let's assume that if you don't hear from me by the end of September of this year, then follow up with me. I mean, I think you have a reasonable expectation that by the end of September, we should have an update. I mean, I guess, Jared, we would expect some action in September versus say October. Yeah, I mean, I'll listen to whatever the landscapers have to say about yeah. what the optimal time to do it is. And, you know, uh, in consultation with, with Chris uh, and Tim, you know, I, I think I'll be able to to give uh, an update to the board. Okay. All right. So so the, the default is going to be by the end of September, and I'll let you know, I'll let interested parties know. Don't assume I have your email. You have to email the planning board to make sure I have your email. I don't, there's no easy way for me to get people's emails and I don't want to get it secondhand. Is there um, any way I can chime in? Um, I see Kate McKinnon. That's Chris Green, but same thing. <laughs> okay. Hello, Chris. Hey, how are you? Um, good. Well, go ahead. I know Chris wanted to jump in, so I am not forgetting you, Chris. No, that's fine. Go ahead. But let's, uh, hey, let's do you want to go first? Let's hear from Chris Green. Because you you have something specific to say about the planting schedule and so forth. I do. I think, um, again, I am staring at the fence line as we speak. And I Ethan is my friend. Tim Smith is my friend. We're all neighbors. Jared is my friend. We've become good friends. I think there's an easy solution to this. And I think the solution is, is Jared's willing to plant this. I'm willing to do the work. Uh, we'll come up with a plan with some low growing trees, bushes, whatever it is. Um, and I would love to do it right now. I just don't feel that right now, as much as I'd like to see a bunch of trees covering that fence is the time. So I think that me, Jared, Tim, Ethan should all take a walk down the fence, figure it out and plant it up and be done with it because it's it's not something i want to look at either yeah at all i really don't i'm I, i'm sitting at my pool looking out here on the computer and staring at a fence i don't like it either but it's there it's going to be there so i think everyone needs to come to terms with that and just let's pick out some plants let's figure out what we want to do and i'm willing to do it whenever the time is right and i think i think Honestly, since we've kind of passed the 
budding of all the evergreens and everything, it would be better to plant it in the fall. Uh, that way we don't get a, a drought issue where evergreens die. I mean, mm -hmm. I just planted arborvitaes on my property in front of Sever River Road and half of them are dying. So um, I, in my opinion, I think you're right. I think everybody should kind of get together, figure out a plan, uh, the neighbors, and get it planted up the way we want to see it. So Tim doesn't have shading of his field. Uh, Ethan is happy with everything. I'm happy with everything. Um, and I've talked to Jared at length about all of this stuff. Um, and now he's my neighbor too. He used to be Ben Rawls or Lou Rawls, whatever. Um, I think it's an easy solution for everyone. Let's get it planted. It's not going away. Nothing's going to happen. Let's put some nice stuff out there, get it planted up. And that's the end of it. But I do agree with Tim that, you know, if, if we don't want to shade the field, then we should plant the proper plants. So Jared sent me a, like a planting schedule of, you know, four or five different plants. Uh, I don't agree with all of them, especially the holly bushes, but I think the four of us should get together and just take a walk and do, like you said, more neighborly, you know, discourse and say, okay, this is what I want. This is what I want. And I'm happy to do it tomorrow. I just don't think tomorrow is the right time. Okay. That, that's that, super helpful. Chris, that's super helpful. I do have a question then back to you, which is, as I said, as you, you heard me slightly rant about um, poor screening of say the solar field, like what are reasonable expectations that we should all have about these plantings taking and you know providing adequate whatever again i don't look at that fence so i'm really looking to all of you to have some reasonable sense of what is what's ideal and what's acceptable and so what yeah if you want to be completely honest with you it's in 10 years it's going to look like every single field that is separated by a line of trees yeah. it's going to be grown up with weeds and vines and everything you're never going to see the fence i know that's not what jared wants but that is the i mean that's the truth if you don't maintain it if you don't mow it if you don't do all that stuff that's the divider between every field and waitley i've lived here for 40 years i was born here that's the way it is um the solar fields i think they're trash i mean i think i think the way that they said that they were going to plant up those fences um they didn't do it the way they said they were going to do it and you know, putting in arborvitaes every 10 feet or 20 feet or whatever, it'll take 30 years before they even come close to screening the field. So I think if, and again, this directly impacts me, Ethan, who's a friend of mine, Tim Smith, he's a friend of mine. We're all neighbors. We all get along. We all sh basically share the same property, the same fields. If if the planning board or the, you know, whatever board is, you know, going to say, okay, it's okay for the solar field to put that in there and put that green screen up that fence and then say, oh yeah, we're going to plant it up. Well, you better do it properly because if you don't do that, then you got to hold him to the same standard that you hold everybody else in town to. And, you know, I feel that that's sort of the, the thing in Waitley now is no one is holding, you know, like it doesn't matter if you're on the top or on the bottom, you have to have the same standards for everyone. Mm -hmm. If you want to shield that fence line, then you have to do it properly. And the first guy who puts it in has to do it properly. Mm -hmm. and if he does it properly in the right way, then the next guy who does it also has to do the same thing. And I think that's the standard that we should hold ourselves to. If we don't, I guess if we don't have, if we have an expectation for what it should look like, it should have already happened on Christian Lane. It should have already happened everywhere that there's a solar field. Mm -hmm. And that would be a good starting point for everybody to look at and say, hey, look at what these guys did. This is what we agreed to. Now we see what it looks like. And now that's what we're going to hold Jared to. Right. Cool. So cool. if it, I would love to say, hey, Jared, although he's a friend of mine, 
plant it up so I can't see a single thing, no yeah. matter what. You do it properly because those guys down the street did it. But if they don't do it, then we kind of have to say, well, it, do it like those guys did it. So if they put a hundred feet of fence up and they plant three arborvitaes, well, you're not shielding anything. So I would love to see this whole fence line covered with trees low enough so that it didn't shade Tim's field because I don't feel like that property should affect any one of our properties, right? Okay. I, I, I think they should all be, it was, you know, no more impact than before. That was the that was the agreed term that we went to. So now we're staring at a fence. All right. All right. This has been super helpful. Um, and I think a note to the planning board. I see you, Sarah. I want to give Chris a chance to weigh in. Sort of a note to the planning board, not tonight. We're I think we do need to revisit the question of the screening of the solar facilities around town and our expectations, because I think Chris has a point, but that's you know a, a topic for another night. Exactly. So, at this point, just to finish up before I go, is if that happens to everyone else in town, all the other companies that are doing it, then I would love to hold Jared to the same standard. But being said, if not, it seems unfair to me even though I'm staring at the fence as we speak, yeah. it doesn't seem reasonable to say, hey, as much as I would like it to happen, it doesn't seem reasonable to say, hey, you got to cover this whole thing right away so we can't see it. Yeah, Because that's not how plantings work either. And I don't want to plant a bunch of, you know, bushes too close to each other so it, so it, it shields it right away. Yeah. And I also don't want to shade Tim's field and I also don't want to, you know, piss off any other neighbors either. Yeah. So yeah. I think yeah. if we, we have take to find the right um, I think the plan going forward would be to sort of do the status quo of what's going on. Uh, and maybe Jared would be in, go a little bit further and put a couple more in there to make it a little bit nicer. And I think that he would be willing to do that. Absolutely, absolutely, my intention. Yes, exactly. All right, that 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 works for me. I think I'd ask that uh, you know updates on this or progress reports periodically when there's something worth sharing with the planning board. Somebody do that, maybe DMCTC. But at the latest, I'll take the initiative and follow up by the end of September to see where we are. Chris Chamberlain. Oh, thanks. I think the conversation's moved on. I, uh, but I guess, uh, Brent, you had talked about the, the delay, and I'm going to take some of the blame for that. I think this has been the planting plan has been a little bit of a moving target. Um, perhaps the original sin was back in 2020 when we were all working remote. I let my landscape architects off the leash a little bit, and some of those initial choices uh, were, were causing Tim some concern. Um, but I think everything that I've heard is great, and especially Chris's last point that you've got to you got to put the plants in with an eye to what they're going to look like 10, 15, 20 years down the road, which means that they're not going to be perfect on day yeah. one. But if they're established correctly, you know, especially if you've got something fast growing within a year or two, you should really see them starting to take off. Yeah. And that said, I, I may want to just follow up with you offline to understand better, like what we can what we can do about some of the other fences in town. But thank you, I appreciate that. Sarah. Just what I seem to recall from many of conversations about landscaping, we try to focus on native species, deer resistant species. And the other thing is the solar requirements do seem to correlate with this to some extent in terms of height, mm -hmm. but the solar has been very much about doing the bare minimum. Yeah. So yeah. it would be appreciated. I'm sure by the abutters who look at the fence. Yeah, like I said, it, I but we really, another... yeah, we've yeah. and I mean that's well. Chris said he wasn't pleased with holly. Holly is very deer resistant and ten, and depending on the variety, can grow smaller. Oh, another thing about the Christian Lane one, it has severe wetland issues, mm -hmm. um, and they have been addressing that on a yearly basis, replacing items that have died because of. It's sitting in a swamp. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So hopefully, barring this past year where everything is a swamp, 
I think this site is drier and has a better chance. Um, but we've really been trying to go, let's not put in a full row of Arbor Vitae's. Number one, deer really like them. And a mix makes the eye, it fades a little bit more in the eye. But that's what I seem to remember from some of our prior emphasis on plantings. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, any other comments or questions from the board members? You know, some, you know, JD and Laura, this has all happened before your time on the board. So um, is there, I'm ready to move off the landscape screening topic unless there's somebody here on the call tonight that would like to comment. And you can just I, go ahead. I'd love to talk about the driveway then. Okay, very the, good. So what I'll sense. do is um, I'm going to do is to help people better understand what we're dealing with with respect to the driveway. Let me just again do a screen share. Uh, so now I'm sharing the plot the approved site plan for the Seven River Road facility. Let's zoom in a little bit here, just so we can see. And I, and I will recognize, i just zoom here. And for, um, I'll point out, because I think this question had come up and there were some people asking about just the, the fence line itself and there are certain bump outs there's normally a 50 foot setback from the property line to the fence line, but because of wetlands within the property and to uh, the planning board and the conservation commission and DMCTC agreed that there would be certain bump outs in the fence line, bringing the fence closer to the property line and, and basically not adhering to the 50 foot setback for portions of the northerly fence to protect wetlands within the property. So that was the explanation for why the, the northern fence line is not just a straight line. But it's the driveway that we're, we want to focus on here. So Jared, what do you want to? Yeah, Brent, if you would just that. zoom in uh, yeah. tightly to that, um, that yeah, main entrance that. there. Let me do that. This doesn't, this tool makes it a little bit more challenging for me to get that in there, but I great. think I've done it. Does this work for people? That's great. Okay. That, that's great. So we, um, we have shifted the driveway southward, but the imprint of the existing older driveway is still there. So that results oh. in a wider driveway. So um, this... When I'm sort of running my mouse, it's a little hard yes, to see. Yes, exactly. There's an old gravel drive that ran very close to the property line. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's the existing non-conforming driveway that persists. Um, and as I understand it from Tim, his concern, and it's a reality, is that people entering our driveway, if you zoom, if you're able to zoom even closer, uh, they so that little uh squiggly lined circle there at the border at the uh northeast corner yeah that's a, that's a tree and mm -hmm. people tend to take that turn sharply and they inadvertently drive over tim's uh tim's property in in doing that and that has led to a rutting out of some of his property in you know in roughly the same triangle that you see there which yeah. I think is the is the apron or the older apron. So we've, as a temporary stopgap, just put a post with a concrete base with a sign saying drive slow to obstruct people from making that turn. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the current driveway is roughly in the shape uh, and position that is asked by this plan and the, you know, the, uh, what do you call it? The um, entry sign for tick. Yeah, the the uh, the drain is uh, is sort of the reference marker there. 
So the drain mm -hmm. is where the drain is supposed to be. Yep. Um, so we have protected the existing roadway drain. We've got a wide road. And as I understand it from Tim, and I would, again, you know, want to turn this over to Tim to make sure I'm understanding what his concerns are. I want to make sure people aren't taking that turn uh, too tightly and, you know, inadvertently driving on his property and then widening a ditch and, you know, widening the widening the apron uh, at the enter entrance and exit of the site. Now, what I remember, I'll give the floor to Tim in a second here. What I remember, and I looked at the, I reviewed the minutes of the meeting where this was discussed in October of 2022, this area, this apron area, it was the highway superintendent that had requested that the apron be <clears throat> paved asphalt versus just gravel because the highway superintendent was concerned that gravel aprons uh, just lead to a lot of gravel debris washing into the roadway. And the minutes suggest that we had that discussion. I could bring up the minutes if anyone wants to see it. Um, okay, no, uh, but so, is there, I guess so I'm saying that my understanding of this plan that was agreed to is that there would be a paved apron adjacent to the roadway. So asphalt paving and then the rest of it gravel. Is that going to be done? I mean, we can certainly take a look at it. Um, the, you know, I think when Keith was looking at it, um, we had freshly laid the gravel and that was leading to the excess coming into the street. Um, I, I think that's no longer a concern, um, but if that's a concern that Tim has, then it's certainly, you know, something uh, that I need to, I need to consider. Um, I'd love so to this understand. Is the, yep. This is the section from the minutes. So these are, I'm just showing minutes of the meeting of October 25th, 2022. So now Chris, Chris is um, listed here as being one of the parties that had no objection to this. Chris, does this catch you by surprise for some, for any reason? Because I think there, I'm hearing there are a couple, of, there's an issue that Tim has about the the entrance in some sense migrating or being too ill-defined and too close to his property line and vehicles cutting sharply across what is effectively his property line. I see an understanding in minutes and reflected on the plan that there would be a paved apron after which there'd be gravel and it seems to me that that solves the problem. You have a paved apron, small section that's paved, you have a clearly defined entrance way off the road and then it's gravel from there on. So we're not talking about something that's particularly expensive and it makes it very clear what the entrance is from the road to the property. So from from DMC's perspective, um, you know, we see, you know, that we have a prior existing non-conforming entrance and exit. Um, and we'd like to talk to Keith Bardwell about it, you know, to update. Um, but I want to make sure that we're addressing what Tim Smith's actual concern is. Uh, if if that's his concern, then, you know, that's something that we need to take seriously. Uh, but if his concern is something else altogether, then, you know, I want to make sure that I'm addressing his actual concern. So I want to address Tim's concern, but I don't want to lose sight of what I understood to be a prior agreement with input from the highway superintendent about how this, how this driveway would be configured as part of this plan. Now, I'm open to the idea that um, 
or from a planning board perspective, I we will enforce what the highway department wants for this driveway. So if Keith feels like the current conditions are not adequate, then that's what I what that's what I need to know. So so I have not yet personally spoken to Keith about the current condition of the driveway. Yeah, I'm I'm fine to talk to Keith as well. I guess the 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 observation I have is that our driveway is not dissimilar from many slash most other driveways up and down mm -hmm. River Road. Mm -hmm. Um and I would just want, you know, I would want to be treated in the same way that all other properties are treated. I don't think there's anything that uh, you know, makes our agricultural operation significantly different in the use of that road from um, from others. Um, and if you know, if there's no other no other issue um, uh, with you know besides this um, gravel runoff, you know, which I think can be addressed, I you know, I'd like to keep this prior existing nonconforming um, entrance and exit. Do you mind if I chime in? Go ahead. Who's the, who's chiming in? All right, Chris Green again. Chris Green. Yeah. So I could be wrong about this, and you, again, have to talk to Keith, but I thought in Wheatley that 10 feet off the road had to be paved uh, to every driveway. Does that exist in all driveways in Wheatley? Absolutely not. Um, I'm waiting for someone to say the same thing about my driveway at Nine River Road. Um, I had my gravel driveway at 25 River Road, gravel forever. Ethan redid his driveway and paved both inlets to his horseshoe driveway. I think there is a law in Waitley that says that, you know, 10 feet off the road needs to be paved. Does everyone do that? No. Um, so can I interrupt, Chris? Because my understanding is that th there's this principle, of course, of, that we informally refer to as grandfathering, right? If there's an existing use, an existing driveway, what, whatever, that's in place before a regulation goes into effect, then um, that's allowed, that's allowed to persist. Perfect. But when there is, as was the case in Seven River Road, there's a change in use. There's a new plan for the property it's no longer whatever it was before now it's outdoor indoor you know there's marijuana cultivation then the when there's a change of use that creates the opening for requiring upgrades to current conditions yeah right. that was my that was my only that was my that's why i said i i didn't really know i just know now that they require that even when i built my garage at my own property, they wanted me to pave, you know, the front of the driveway. Now my driveway is paved, but it took me 10 years to do it. But I just, I think that that would be, because I'm sure that my new property that's in front of Seven River Road, Nine River Road, is going to require that same paving. And I just wanted to say, if that was the case, I would be more than happy when they're paving mine to do that same thing. But I think, as Jared said, too, is just make sure that, you know, all the abutters get what they want before that happens. Yeah. So if Tim, you know, I know that 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 line is cutting into Tim's property because um, I plow their driveway and everything. And I know Tim and I, I hope we all get along and everything's good. So I think it would be an easy fix to take a walkthrough with the neighbors and stake out exactly where that driveway is supposed to go on that line and then like i said i'm going to have to pay of mine because mine is obviously not new it, it i mean it is new it's not grandfathered in um i'd be more than happy to you know pave that it would be very inexpensive so if that makes anybody else happy on the meeting um i think that would be just something so right I now i i'm looking for the the path that is most acceptable all around. I do want to, I know that, let's see. So I want to give Tim a chance to weigh in about the driveway issue, but I'm going to recognize 
um, Isaac, who has his hand up, and then JD, and then get to Tim. So Isaac, you've got the floor. You, you have to come off of mute, however. How about now? Can you hear me okay? I can hear you now. Great. Um, so I, um, I'm i legal counsel for DMC. Jared just um, informally asked me to hop on to this. Um, and I, I think I can, I can provide a little bit of clarity on this, this pre-existing non-conforming use question, also known as grandfathered in. And there's, there's really two different categories. There's there's uh, pre-existing uses and there's pre-existing structures. And um, a change in use um, often triggers uh, necessary changes to structures. Um, but just the change of use on its own wouldn't um, wouldn't take the driveway out of the pre-existing non-conforming uh, structure category, even though it's not. Uh, what we typically consider a structure, it falls into that category rather than use. Um, and so, I mean, I, I spoke to Jared, and there's there is clearly a problem with um, the entrance to the driveway because really the old driveway is still there in addition to the new driveway. They've just become kind of one widened entrance. Um, so, I mean, I think Jared has already said this, but I, what makes the most sense is to, you know, work with um, the highway department and the interested parties to, you know, come up with a solution that addresses the actual issue. Because um, I, I don't think that the regulations, you know, regarding, you know, paving the, the entrance to the driveway are, are the issue here. I think, I think the issue is, is there gravel runoff? Uh, is there an encroachment into in a, in a neighbor's property, um, and and how do we address the actual issues here? Um, so yeah, I would just I would just kind of make that distinction between what what would be required in the regulations versus you know what are real issues that need to be addressed. Okay, all right, I appreciate that. Very helpful. JD, you're next. You may have to come off mute too. Oh, I can bear you're muted, JD. Uh, better? Yep, better. Uh, Chris made a statement about the driveway paving, and per the Town of Waitley Highway regulations, the first eight feet of the driveway, as measured, shall be paved with bituminous concrete, minimum thickness of two inches, unless the town road is unpaved. So they have to be eight feet. So it's so there's the question of whether, as Isaac points out that the existing non-conforming structure, the existing gravel drive may um, not be legally, there may be no legal authorization to force it to be moved. But we do want to resolve the issue with, with, the, uh, with the abutter to the north. So Tim, mm -hmm. um, what, what are your thoughts about where this conversation is going with respect to our existing plans to resolve your concern about um, encroachment on your property and so forth. Yeah, so looking at, at the, um, the the plan you have on, on the screen, if the old driveway is still sitting next to the new one, that's what people are following. And when they, especially when the site work got done and the dump trailers were coming in, um, they would cut that grass off on my corner of my lot. And then every other one person coming down afterwards would just follow the lines and you know so that, that's how it just kept encroaching um north and i know chris backfilled everything but now all that does is make the driveway look like it's even further north so jared did put a bucket out there with a sign in it um but maybe like chris has done on his property a landscaping rock on the old driveway would deter everyone big enough mm -hmm. so if you hit it you would know it yeah. I do feel like we need a solution here. I mean, I will do a little bit more research about um, 
and whether whether the planning board could enforce the um, paving the the installation of a paved apron per current highway regulations. I'm not going to assert that claim tonight. But what I do want is some effort between now and the next planning board meeting in June to identify a solution that might fall short of a paved apron, but would perhaps as Tim suggests, use rocks or something else so that the a proper entrance from the road further to the south, you know, roughly roughly following what this plan would would require, if not paved, would be put into place. Something something well defined, you know, that you yes. you know where you're supposed to be going. Yeah, because it did feel to me like the current gravel entrance is just it's a very wide and ill defined gravel area leading to Seven River Road. And if that, that's why I think a paved apron solves the problem because it makes it very clear what the driveway is. I also understand that DMCTC may not wanna um, incur the cost and, and, and disruption of putting in such a thing, but if we, so if we can find another solution that creates the equivalent of a well-defined apron without leading to a lot of debris into the road and just ensures that drivers are not, are, are, are entering sufficiently far to the south of the property line that we just don't have this issue anymore. That's uh, totally agreeable. I will work with Tim and Chris on this as well. Okay. All right, so that's my request that we will, that's the landscape screening is something we'll, revisit offline, not in a planning board meeting by the end of September. The driveway issue, um, I don't necessarily feel I'm, I'm going to need to put this back on the planning board agenda for an actual planning board meeting, but I'd like to understand what the plan is or there, I'd like to have correspondence with concurrence from Tim Smith by the next planning board at the end of June that we have a plan. And if we, if I'm not satisfied by the next planning board meeting that progress has been made, I will put this back on the planning board meeting agenda for the end of June. I'll just intend to send an email CC to, you know, to you and Tim. Okay. I believe that we've fully addressed the DMCTC site condition topic. Does anyone disagree or have a question or a well, comment? I had one or just a question, observation I had put on my list. Wondering about security, because in the past it was always a guy sitting in a pickup truck um, from about eight o'clock to four in the morning. And uh, I just wondered if that is that is that security requirement gone or 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 what? So let me just, I, I don't, I, I'll, I'll give the floor to Jared in a, in a moment, but I'll just say in general, security is not a planning board purview. I mean, that's really between um, the operator of the facility and the Cannabis Control Commission. And I've inquired, and I am continuing to inquire with Waitley Public Safety about if they have any concerns but it's not, we don't have any conditions in our site review about it. And I certainly understand that um, DMCTC has to be very careful about discussing their security arrangements in a public forum. So with that preamble, uh, and I see Isaac has raised his hand, but I'll first give the floor to Jared to respond however you would like to, Jared. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, Isaac, take it away. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just, I wanted to make sure that uh, we really limit what we say about the security at the site um, at a public meeting. Um, the way that it's typically handled is uh, the marijuana establishment, Jared in this case, coordinates with, um, you know, local police and fire and, um, you know, Tim, if, if you or any abutters of concerns about security, I think, 
um, you can contact Jared or you can um, you can contact the police department and they can work with Jared. Uh, we just can't do it in like a public forum setting. So I'm independently reaching out. I have independently reached out to the police chief um, just to find out if the police chief has any concerns. Any Waitley resident, Tim, Ethan, anyone can feel free to reach out independently. But um, I'm doing it just as as a member of the planning board to just make sure that there's there's no other issues. Though I wouldn't necessarily need to report that to other people. All right. So we're not. I think that's it on the security topic. I'm gonna stop sharing. I think. Um, I think we're done with this topic. Could I say one more thing about the driveway? Okay, Chris, go for it. Uh, I think half of the problem was me building my new building as far as the driveway goes. Um, I used Seven River Roads driveway. I think all the trucks pulling in kind of cut that off. Um, I will have that fixed by the end of the weekend. And I will talk to Tim and we'll map it out where he wants it to go. And I'll be glad. I have a ton of rocks over there. I'll be glad to stick a rock in there if Jared's okay with it. Uh, but I do take responsibility for sort of maybe messing up the front of that driveway. I tried to fix it, but I think I might have widened it just a little too much. Um, and that's that's it. So I yeah. think I resolved that problem though without without any other issue between me and yeah. Chris, I think that it was really Kent Brothers when they started. I walked over to the guy on the dozer, told him to take his told him to take his trucks a little bit wider swing, but they'd already done the damage. It was set in place back then. Okay. But, I appreciate yeah. that. I, I'll take responsibility for stuff. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. We can well, work right. it. Yeah, I'll work it out with you. And then again, like I said in the beginning of the meeting, as far as the fence line goes, me, me, you, and Ethan would take a walk. Let's figure it out and just get it done. Because, like I said, it impacts me as much as it does you, as much as it does Ethan. I want to make it look nice, and we'll make it happen. Awesome. Awesome. Thank right. you. I want to thank everyone for your participation in this conversation, for being, you know, cordial and respectful. And um, I, I think it's ideal. And I was very, I'm very pleased that with the sort of shared sense of working this out together, I don't necessarily feel this needs to be a recurring item on the planning board meeting. Again, I want everyone to feel like if for whatever reason you don't feel you, that having this on the planning board agenda would be helpful in, in getting action, then I'm willing to consider that. But for the time being, I'd like to, my expectation is that all of you are going to work together as friends and neighbors and sort this all out to everyone's satisfaction. And I'll poke my nose in from time to time just to make sure all is well. But I don't, I, I don't necessarily see that this is going to have to be on the planning board agenda again anytime soon. And I think we'll all be grateful for that. So thank you all. Uh, we're ready now to leave this topic and move on to something much less interesting and exciting. So any of you who are done with uh, DMCTC can feel free to go back to your regular lives. Have a great night and thank you again. Thanks, Brant. I appreciate it. All right, Jared, again, thank you, you know, um, for bringing this to my attention. I'm joking that you know, no, no good deed. You didn't have to, um, but I'm glad you did. Please stay in touch. And um, I don't want anyone to be left feeling that um, I put this on the agenda out of any feeling that um, DMCTC was not acting in a you know, neighborly way of like a, a the kind of business we would like to have in Waitley. So thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, guys. Catch you soon. All right. See you later. All righty. So the next topic is going to be the um, revisions to the common driveway and side lot access special permit application. I know you all have been dying for that for that topic so i'm going to get ready to do my screen share again
share my screen. I don't know. So I'm going to have to share my whole screen. Okay. So to catch you all up, we had discussed at our last meeting a revision that we should revise our special permit application. We don't on the planning board deal with special permits very often, <laughs> but we just had to do one recently and it uh, we were we had to absorb all the costs of advertising and notices. So we've we discussed updating the proposal. We had a draft that we circulated at last meeting. Uh, there are questions about how the form didn't seem to necessarily require an owner signature. And it wasn't clear in the original form if, you know, how do we tell whether there's a, the applicant for a special permit is the same or different from the owner, blah, 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 blah. It was suggested that I follow up with town council. I, in fact, followed up with our, the next best thing, uh, Lynn Sibley, our acting town administrator. And she felt her advice was that we should modify the instructions to make it clear that um, if the applicant is not the owner, then some letter of support from the you know non-applicant owners is required. So I got kind of a sense of what recommended language from Lynn to be to add to the instructions. And then I kind of went beyond the instead of just tweaking the old planning board application form, I pulled down the most up-to-date zoning board of appeals application form for special permits. Because I asked myself, why should a application to the ZBA for a special permit look very different than an application to the planning board for a special permit? I mean, special permits are special permits. They're different organizations, different boards that handle different kinds of special permits. But the status quo is that the ZBA's form and the planning board's form look very different. So, and the ZBA is doing special permits a lot. So I created, and what you're looking at, what I'm sharing is a revised proposed application for special permit for the planning board, just for side lot driveway access or common driveway permits, because those are the only two in the zoning bylaws that we handle. I took the form from the ZBA and edited it to make it appropriate for us, replacing ZBA with planning board and you know wherever that was appropriate. All right. This language down here is pulled directly from the ZBA application form, which is what we, this was really the motivation. We wanted to make it clear in our application that the full cost of advertising all legal notices and mailings to abutters would be the applicant's responsibility. That's kind of the whole reason to do this. We didn't, our current form doesn't say this, and thus we incurred the cost ourselves. So it's fixed here. Also, the ZBA form happens to explicitly request what the relationship is between the owner and the applicant. So I left that in. And then I've added to our instructions that language that I roughly got from Lynn. And the instructions are basically, in all other respects, the same instructions as on our current form. We also fixed the instructions to point out that applicants should be familiar with highway department regulations for driveways. So those are the main fixes. So, I believe that this, what I'm sharing with you, which is looks very similar, has a very similar look and feel to the ZBA special permit application, has instructions appropriate for us for special permits for side lot and common driveways, also includes, like our current application form, the 
it, it incorporates the relevant section of the bylaws and it has a page for handwritten abutters. I think this form does everything we would want in a new revised application for a planning board special permit. And I would welcome any comments or feedback before and, and hopefully maybe a motion to vote to approve. So floor is open. I see Sarah. Do you want to put on something on about accurate plans saying electronic file is accepted? And also an, an electronic list of the abutters because just that electronic. Oh, yes. Okay. So um, welcome. A. So that's right. So there should be. So let's take this separately. So this thing about an accurate plan. So you're suggesting, right now we get it as a, we don't put any details on, we don't put requirements on the plan, scale or anything like that. We just say- right. At accurate. some point, it needs to be on paper if we need to sign it. But yeah. other than that, it's lovely to have electronic files for- but We don't really need, my knowledge, we don't need to sign the plans for special permits. So it's just a thought in terms of our files and space saving and that right. years and years and years, I think decades old requirement from the state saying go paperless. Um, what if we added a sentence at part one that just say an electronic copy of the plan would is encouraged to uh, allow Right. I mean, at well, some point, we have to have a hard copy of this for wet signatures. Right, right. But let me try this language on you. An electronic copy of the of a paper. An electronic copy of the plan is encouraged to enable um, and along those lines, is this um, a fillable form? It's not a fillable form. That was like, for me, a little bridge too far, Sarah, like figuring out the that. Adobe stuff. And I, I worry, like, I see a lot of people are still printing these things and handwriting on them. We're definitely in both worlds. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, maybe doing a version of this as a fillable form so having two versions available yeah but um, i just know how abysmal my own personal handwriting is yeah no i know but um yeah and i don't myself know i i'd have to spend some time learning how to create a fillable form using adobe or something like that so this this again i sort of thought if this works for the zba and they deal yes. with these a lot, like it, it probably will work for us. Since the last time we did a special permit besides this year was 2010, like it doesn't happen a lot. I mean, I, I think there probably needs to be a push from town administration to get all these forms fillable. Yeah. And there should be somebody there who hopefully has a skill, the skill set to do that. But it's just a thought. But yes, if we're going to do one fillable form, it should be consistent throughout town too. But yes, saying we would like try to get our subtle less paper, more electronic in there. So the abutters, so I think just making a recommendation, because I think the, the premise here is really captured in the very first part of the instructions. You know, meet informally with us before submitting an application. That gives us a chance to have a conversation, make sure everyone understands what we need and answer any questions. So I don't have to over-specify all of this in the instructions. Your content is, yes. Yeah, but then you made a really good point about um, a certified copy of the abutter list from the town assessor. That would be awesome. Yeah. Can't argue with that. 
because we're going to have to do, we have to do a public hearing. And we have certainly ran into a problem within old of utter list in the past. So what if we do something, maybe three and four can be combined. Um, um, a certified list, list of all owner's names of property. You need to state who it's certified by. Yeah, a list. Let's do this. A list of all list running the premise as well as so those. basically three four and five are all encompassed within the 300 feet thing i'm sorry you said three four and five yeah right a list of owners names and current addresses abutting the premises a list of owners names and current addresses of the land immediately adjoining the land of the abutters so if you just say within 300 feet you got three and four together and what's different about is that but what it, are there scenarios in which on a prop a property might lie across a highway but more than 300, 300 feet away feet. like if you have a long rectangular lot that abuts the the railroad line along 90 or so I'm not sure. Um, I'm just trying to get the language for three correct, combining immediate abutters um, as well as those as well as those of of all owners' names and current address of the property abutting the property as well as and number five isn't clear okay are you seeing what i'm editing live on screen or because i've eliminated right now i'm trying to combine okay. the original then three item and number four. four isn't all that clear oh you mean this one about all yes. owners of land across all highways within what right yeah within what distance and do they need to abut that's a that's really a good question i'm not sure how to yeah because if like interstate 91 goes through it does do the people on the other side of the interstate really matter i agree if they're within 300 feet they're going to be captured anyways yeah yeah I'm just um all right Bruce, so what? so maybe so maybe in the interest of time um I'll I think we'll table further discussion, or at least let's see if there are any other comments or questions. I think right now I'm going to just highlight this three and four and take action to work on the language between now and our next meeting. Like so I'm not, this is not a hair on fire urgent thing because I just don't feel there's another special permit coming right up, but I don't want to drag out. Because <laughs> it was very expensive, the, the last two special public hearings that we had to do. Um, so let me Brent, just try to work on that. Go ahead, JD. Brent, why are we, I understand you want to be like the zoning board, but not having 
the owner's signature on the document and having a, an addendum to it of his letter of support. Every permit application I have to file to build requires an owner's signature. It's a building permit, a septic permit, a well permit. Um, all of them require the owner's signature. Well, so I think the point, J.D., I hear what you're saying. Um, so I think the point of this form is that the form, it's a, you're, you're, somebody's making application. So there's a name of an applicant, a signature of an applicant, other information of the applicant, and information about what's the relationship to the owner. And I think in most cases, the relationship to owner will be same, yeah. you know? And so this form deals with it. And in like the when, case, I came before, when I came before you for my property in Egypt Road, I was not the owner. Right, right. And I, again, the form, so a the owner, so this is true of the ZBA, property owners are not necessarily the only ones allowed to make applications for special permits. But okay. the ZBA then gets additional documentation from the property owner in that case. Okay. I mean, you and you, we find lots of properties right now that are owned by real estate trusts. You know, you, you yeah. leave you you put the your house in the name of your three children or whatever and they are the trustees of it and then one of them tries to do something without the permission of the other two no i and i understand that and this is why yeah. by adding this to the instructions where then off so the form requires disclosure by right. the applicant is the applicant the owner or not yeah okay that's right here. And then the instructions say that if the applicant is not the owner, because also like in the case of the common driveway special permit, there are multiple owners involved, all yep. of them sharing the common driveway. And yep. so only one of them is submitting, like in the case of the Beans, Kaylee Bean was the applicant. Yep. She didn't own all the other properties. So we, but we got there, you know, they, they confirmed by their presence in the public hearing that they were supportive of the special permit in this case. Well, I, now, so I guess what I'm getting at is that, is that our due diligence to make sure that whoever's applying for something that they are in fact, the actual owners or they have the approval of the owners of the property and that you know the consensus of, of the owners if there's multiple of them that they all want this to happen yes or well, that's that, true you know, them that they have to prove to us that they have consensus from the owner or owners that they want to do this are we putting that's on true. us from the applicant well i mean there's really i mean in a world where there, there could be forgers i mean yes we always we routinely have yep. to do due diligence in all the things that we do, <laughs> right? Yep. As we handle site reviews, we collect documents. Um, yep. so, so this is no different. The main thing is that um, uh, in many cases and probably in most cases, the signature of the applicant will be the same as the signature of the owner and the form will allow that to be made clear. Okay. All right. So I think this I think this will work. I I I would just say that we make I don't know if the applicant is not the owner of the affected property or properties, let of support from all of the non applicant owners be submitted if there's more than one. Yes, that's what I've highlighted <laughs> on the screen. So I was gonna say from all. Yeah. From all. From all. So from this, all. Yeah. So if the applicant Right now, the language in the instructions reads, maybe you're, you can't quite read it on your phone. If the applicant is not the owner of the affected property or properties, letters of support from all non-applicant okay. owners must be submitted at time of application. 
Okay. Yeah, I see that now. Emphasis on all. Yep. Okay. I'm good with I that. I mean, that's pretty easy for us to double check with the property card. Yeah. 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 For our due diligence. Right. Yeah. And that just serves as a reminder. Like the form requires the disclosure, but we need to confirm everything that is provided to us on these forms, just like we have to do on site review applications. And how, so um, Brent, how up to date are the property cards? Because quite often a piece of property changes hands and I go to pull permits and it still has all the previous owner's information on it. I have no idea, honestly. That's a good question for the assessors. Yeah. Because that yeah. happens. I, my property, Egypt Road, according to the town, belonged to Fair for a year after I bought it. I got the tax bill, but online it showed that it still belonged to him. Huh. Yeah. I don't think it ha I don't think it's updated all the time. I think there's a lag. Yeah. And the I, current assessor's maps don't show a property on Chris's green Chris Green's property at all. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, I imagine this is part of the transition from the now retired assessor to whomever. And we don't, to my knowledge, we don't have a new assessor. Can I, 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 can I chime in on this? Please. Sure. Yeah. Um, I have to pull property cards pretty often for work, and I will say Waitley is actually more up to date than a lot of the other small towns around that have <laughs> minimal resources. So um, I I wouldn't I wouldn't bother anybody in the town office about it too much because I think that they actually are doing a better job than a lot of other people out there. Um, and JD, if you're concerned about your project your property on Egypt Road, I would say something and just say. Hey, yeah, I bought yeah. this, you know, here's my bill of sale or whatever. Here's my title yeah, to the yeah. property. You know, can you update it? And I'm sure they'll get it done. Yeah, I, I'm on the FCICIP advisory board and they talk about getting the accurate information uploaded from the assessors into the system when they issue permits. And there's definitely a lag. Something about the merging of the, the, the data. Hmm. Okay. So we just okay. want to make sure it's right. That's all. All right. Well, I'm going to close this topic and take action to bring um, table it or, or another. Yep, we're going to table it for now. So no motion, no vote. Um, it um, says in the assessor's maps, it says JDR dash R E L C. It does now, but for like the first year, it didn't. Yeah. Deer feels worse. Deer feels worse. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't know if they've still updated ours. Ah. Okay. Well, I think we're ready. We're at the, the last gasp of this meeting. So we're we're now just down to approval of minutes. Um, and so again, I'll share my screen. So we had one about one batch of minutes going back to January 31, that the only thing that wasn't uh we didn't have at the time meeting or two ago was what the, this particular date was. Judy gave me the date. We have the updated documentation. So I believe that um, the minutes of January 31st, 2024 are now complete and accurate. I will make that motion to accept the updated minutes, minutes of January, January 31st. 31st. Okay. Okay. Motion has been made. I second. JD seconds it. We've got, second. got, got, got a funny echo, echo going on. We got a wicked, got a wicked echo. echo. What is that about? Sorry for the wicked. Um, okay. okay. Motion has been made, made and seconded. Second. We'll do our little um, Sarah. I. JD. I. Uh, Laura. I. Okay. And Brant is I. So. The minutes of January 31 are approved unanimously. Yay for that. And then the last one is just our last meeting, April 24th. Get this. So I circulated okay, so I'm gonna do my screen share again. Okay, okay. 
Very good. Okay. Let's turn on so all the markup. So I circulated minutes. Judy did some markup. Um, so corrected acre to acres, deleted the word word, just proposed changes. Uh, Judy added a comment about the citation errors. Did she make any other, I don't think she made any other changes. She added the word amended in documents reviewed. And I think that was the extent of it. And so I looked at all of her revisions to the minutes of April 24th, and that all seemed good to me. Any other comments or questions? or corrections to the minutes of our April 24th meeting? Nope. And hearing none, then maybe I'll hear a motion to approve. Sarah's making that motion. I'll make Sarah. a motion to approve the April 24th minutes as amended. As amended, very good. And maybe JD's making a second. I'll second it. All right, JD has in fact, I don't know if that's leading the witnesses, but uh, Thank you, JD. All right, roll call, Sarah. Yes. JD. Yes. Laura. Yes. Grant is yes. So those minutes are also approved as amended. So I'll get those cleaned up and posted. So we're done with that. So we're now into additional items not uh, anticipated Sarah, I believe you might have such an additional item. I do. I dropped off um, Tom Litwin's um, plaque, and he was absolutely thrilled. And it was lovely to see Tom. Um, he says he's going to put it on the wall of his office. Good. Um, and while I was there, he asked me about the property to the north of 148 State Road. Um it is parcel 12-0-24-2. It's um, abutting the Monaham trucking property. It's the barn that had the addition on it. Right. And as part of that, looking back into my stuff from fall of 22, I believe, we had wrote a letter to the select board, uh, not the select board, the- Building inspector. The building inspector that our number one item was- that there would be no let me find this i have it somewhere uh, yeah no i got all these really crazy unsigned letters ah letting to build an inspector item no that was a whole different building inspector but basically it said no activities that have to do with the continuous, the property next door shall show up on that property. Um, right. I can't, again, can't read my own writing. Use for, nothing on that property should be used for commercial purposes having right. to do with the property next door. Yeah. Um, and I have drove by many a time and it does really look like there's Monaghan trucking trucks parked back there and that that building wouldn't be used for commercial use or anything. So what are, what do we need to do? Talk to the building inspector to say, hey, it doesn't look like they're complying with the what the planning board specifically asked for. Yeah. And I think yeah. a September 6, 22 letter. So let me, I, I think I'll plan between now and our next meeting just to do a drive by and take a photo. Um, and then pull that letter. And okay. then I think we'll, I don't think that I need to, you know, have further deliberation as a planning board about this. 
Right. I'll communicate. Are... I'll um, pull that letter because I believe we have it in our electronic files. Oh, uh, yeah, that's another item I need to talk to you about. Uh, so I'll pull that letter. I'll add a current photograph and I'll convey that the planning board and I'll I expect that I'll CC the town administrator. Yeah, I don't know if the select board were also very involved and brought this extra to our attention because there were some anonymous letters that were sent to right us. Right at the time. I so should. I don't know if you want to. Anyway, probably the town administrator is perfect. Okay. Very good. All right. So we give, Tom, the lines a, of we give Tom an award and he responds by giving us more work. Tom. <laughs> okay. I couldn't get into OneDrive. It's asking for dual authentication. Really? Yes, of course I have three separate OneDrives. But yeah, so I don't know if for the planning board one planning one board box. So I couldn't get in. But huh. so that's maybe something we can deal with offline to make sure. Yeah, I'll um I'll email you. So I'll just write Sarah OneDrive. And do we want to address a letter or an email we got from Dan Dennehy? So he sent it to, to multiple parties. I As... just investigated our ta our bylaws. Okay. And 171-27, item C, a mobile home may be occupied as temporary shelter by the owner and occupier of a residence that has been destroyed by fire or other natural holocaust on the site of such residence and for a period not to exceed 12 months while the residence is being rebuilt. Okay. Any such mobile home shall be subject to the provisions of the state sanitary code. So I don't know if we want to confirm with health that it is properly hooked up to sanitary. And I don't know who would. Okay. Well, let's just, first of all, let's just pause for a second here. So it was, I mean, I, I mean, I received an email personally uh, in regard to 151 River Road. Yes. Um, what I was, what the, and I have not yet had a chance personally to do a drive-by. Have you, Sarah? Oh, yes. Multiple so, times. So you've. you've so you've seen what's there. The, le the letter, the email seems to, what I take from the email is that at 151 River Road, there is an accessory apartment, so a structure, presumably a detached structure. It's not part of the existing building. And this email says that as the ZBA issued a special permit at, to for this accessory apartment but so apparently that's what we need to find out more it is a mobile home it looks like it is on wheels okay interesting so the zba yeah, we, I... you're saying so we believe that the zba issued a special permit for a mobile home to be used as an accessory apartment? That's why I think maybe more clarification on what that special permit from ZBA. Okay. But I All wanted right. to add to that, from my appearance from River Road, it appears to be a mobile home on wheels. Okay. Which right. doesn't seem to, for me to comply with what an accessory apartment well, my concern as I drove by is what's the septic and water situation? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think we have some work to do. Just gather some facts, yep. right? We've got some allegations made in an email. Um, uh, I think one action I will take is to follow up with the ZBA to find out like what they did. I mean, I can... If I, I suppose I can look up when they had a their hearing. I mean, I just don't, I don't know how long ago this may have happened. So I want to find out from the ZBA what they believe the facts are. I'd um, like to do if anybody like I, again, 
it's always helpful if somebody happens to be driving by, not I'm in a super a hurry, and it's take a picture. A so I'll try to get by there, you know, in the I'll next I'll take a picture phase. for you. Don't worry about it. Okay. But and, I, I'd uh, like to see what's there. I'd like to understand what the ZBA has issued a permit for. And we go from there. Yeah. I think there's definitely more investigation, but it because it certainly seems to imply that our um well it was quite an email. Okay. Um, but it seems to imply that our how we have changed accessory apartments and okay. All right. So yeah, and, and that it's, it's definitely, definitely worth noting I've been in meetings related to affordable housing and just housing in general, where it's been suggested that one of the solutions um, to making, creating more affordable housing is allowing manufactured homes. And it's been asserted that, you know, in, in, in the past, people associated, if they didn't want trailer parks. Right. in their community because that seemed to that implied certain things to people about look or whatever however manufactured homes have come a long way and are not necessarily um, they look they, they can look very much like a you know built from scratch home they could be very visually appealing they could fit well in a neighborhood but be much more cost effective to build then, you know, create a new foundation and build everything. So it's been, the word has been out that towns might consider looking at whether we should be revising our bylaws to allow manufactured homes or at least, but we don't have any recommendations. I'm not yet ready to go there. So I am, I, I my have family in much le less affluent areas of the country. Um, it's a place to live that you can afford. Yeah, I mean, I don't know personally. Like, I can understand that Waitley residents may feel like Waitley has to be all, you know, single family, bespoke, built by hand homes from the ground up. But that just perpetuates an affordability problem. And if we can find a way to make sure our bylaws are not precluding the, the placement of manufactured homes for single or even multifamily dwellings. Anyway, it would be worth learning more about. We so have, there are at least one, possibly two on Long Plain Road that I'm sure were grandfathered in. Okay. So, you um, mean trailers Tail or accessory houses apartments. that appear to not have a basement or crawl okay. space okay okay all right so some items to track for our next meeting so we've got 148 state road and 151 river road okay and it's actually the property to the north of 148 okay great yeah, I've made a note north of 148 State Road. And I know exactly. And I, too, have driven by there, not as regularly, but I've looked and said, boy, there seem to be a lot of trucks, like back around there where I thought there weren't supposed to be trucks. But Brian, is the 148 commercial or residential? So 148 is commercial, but to the north of it is residential. Because... Kyle owns 148, but his mom owns one of north of it. That's the point. So there was a proposal. The planning board at the Monahan's request uh, brought a zoning revision, just like we did with your property on Egypt Road, to rezone the, the parcel north of 148 State Road to, yeah. from residential, from AR1, to commercial. Yeah. That was voted down at town meeting. There was a fair amount of um, resident opposition. And yep. there was no 
nobody, no Monaghan spoke in faith. There is no support of the rezoning and there was substantial opposition to the rezoning. So the result was it, the rezoning wasn't approved. So mm -hmm. it remains residential. But then they built this large structure. The barn which, was there. They put an addition on the barn. Oh, that's right. There was a barn there and they put a large addition on it. And the story was that it was going to just be used for storage of personal yeah, we don't know. vehicles or whatever, and that yeah. it would not just become an extension of the commercial activities adjacent. Mm -hmm. But it does look like the commercial activities have now expanded onto the residential property. At least it looks that way if you're driving by. Are we enforcing the rules about unregistered vehicles in Waitley? Um, we never super... enforce anything except based on if, you know, we don't do anything proactively. It's... We have no, no all resources the to All do the vehicles that. on my property are currently registered. <laughs> Mine are too, but there's a lot of properties in town where there's an abundance of unregistered vehicles. I have... Certainly had a history of many unregistered vehicles on my property. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do plan as after we get beyond town meeting, and I'd like us all to be thinking about priorities for you know work for the board. I would say in new board projects and new initiatives going looking ahead to 2025 with Judy leaving the board so much so much of what the board did was really um you know she really drove a lot of our agenda because she was thinking ahead and and we need to sort of step up and think about what are the things I think we're going to do this on. I mean I would like to know who our enforcer and we have problems with enforcing but I think our subdivision takes precedence that yeah. needs to be amended yeah, so so we will revisit this topic. Not tonight because it's seven oh three, and I think okay. so. I just want to find out if there are any other additional items not anticipated. Because hearing none, it be motion to adjourn. Three, we could make a motion to adjourn. Or JD, are you offering a motion to adjourn? Yeah. All right. And Sarah, are you seconding that motion? Definitely. All right. Any objections? Then it is 703. We are adjourned. I